this fifth generation Clio Super Mini is familiar yet thoroughly different, returning Renault to a position of real credibility in the small car sector and offering the kind of complete package that could return this model line to its old position as one of Britain's favourites. Tougher segment competition has forced the French brand to up its game particularly in terms of cabin technology, fit and finish, but we're impressed by the way the company has responded, ticking these boxes while also adding in greater practicality, extra safety, more sophisticated media technology and a sharper look. There's plenty to like here. Renault set out here to try to deliver a driving experience to Clio buyers, which is a little different to that that they served up before. Now, previous models had something of a comfort focus, but with this fifth generation design, the brand has sought to combine that with a little of the alert feel that you get in this segment from cars like Ford's Fiesta. Uh, it would be asking a little much for the company to absolutely nail this demanding brief at its first proper attempt, but it has got reasonably close. A little of what we might call uh, Cleonus has been sacrificed in the process. Uh, this car no longer cruises over bumps with quite the ease of its predecessor. Most undulations though are dispatched without fuss and there is certainly a purpose to the way that the car turns into bends and a level of body control that certainly wasn't there before. Plus, of course, in town, as you'd expect, it's nippy, manoeuvrable and easy to park. Engine-wise, most buyers are going to want Renault's latest one-litre three-cylinder unit available either in normally aspirated form in the base SCE 75 variant or in turbocharged guys with the TCE 100 power plant that most customers will prefer. Uh, that engine is also offered with the option of CVT automatic transmission. With forced induction, this 999cc power plant feels agreeably eager and it's decently economical too. It delivers 54.3 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle and 99 grams per kilometer of any DC rated CO2. If you want to do better there's a blue DCI 85 1.5 litre diesel model or you can ask your dealer about an E-Tech self-charging full hybrid variant which mates a 1.6 litre petrol engine to a clever multi-mode auto gearbox and a pair of electric motors powered by a 1.2 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery. Your other engine option is the four-cylinder 1.3-litre TCE 130 unit that we're trying here, which has to be had with an EDC seven-speed automatic gearbox. And whatever power plant you select, refinement is excellent by segment standards, very nearly class-leading, and that's enough to make this Renault a very pleasurable companion on the kind of longer journeys that you might normally expect to find a touch wearing in such a small car. Like its direct predecessor, this fifth generation Clio aims to act as a standard bearer for Renault's recent renaissance and its approach to vehicle design, with inspiration that, like that previous car, draws heavily on Dutch stylist Lauren van der Acker's futuristic Desir concept car of 2010. This means at first glance you might think it very similar to that Mark IV model, uh, the same pinched waistline door mouldings, uh, the same upturned rear window sills, the same one box silhouette. Uh, the profile window aperture is actually identical to that of the previous model. But look closer. For a start, this is the rarest of things, a replacement car which is actually smaller than its predecessor, although not by very much. And beneath the skin, around 85% of all the stuff that you can't see has been completely redesigned. In short, this is about as different as an all-new car tends to get these days. We can't immediately think of a bigger step forward in interior design and quality in any car we've recently tested. That feeling of second-class citizenship that was delivered by previous Clio cabins is well and truly banished here in favour of soft-touch trimming, tactile touch points and a distinctly Audi-esque feel to parts of this completely revitalised design, particularly this fascia-wide ventilation strake and these circular ventilation dials that sit midway down the centre stack. Smart piano key switches featured just above, plus various satin-finished metal embellishments and the redesigned, more enveloping seats both also play their part in helping to push this car a little more upmarket. Jump out of a Fiesta, a Corsa or something Korean into one of these and you'd feel like you've been upgraded to business class. 
Uh, various screens, of course, help with the whole more sophisticated demeanour, uh, particularly this central EasyLink portrait display. And that's available in either 7-inch or, as in this case, 9.3-inch forms. You can also view another screen through this uh, redesigned three-spoke steering wheel here. Plusher variants get this 7-inch TFT configurable instrument display, which at the top of the range can be upgraded to an even wider 10-inch monitor if you'd like. So let's take a seat in the back. These thinner front seat backs have apparently freed up an extra 26 millimeters of extra knee room in this fifth generation model. But even so, one tallish adult can still only just about sit behind another. And you wouldn't really be wanting to do that for very long. Uh, room for knees and legs is at something of a premium. But does that matter given that for the majority of buyers, these rear seats will be used only occasionally for adults and more regularly for children? only you can decide. We'll finish with a look at cargo space and that's where this Clio atones for its somewhat restricted rear seat surroundings by somehow managing to serve up the largest boot in the super mini segment. Uh, helpfully, Runner has provided us with a measurement stat for the height of the tailgate, 1,979 mils, and once it's raised, thanks to this car's uh, slightly extended rear overhangs, there's 391 litres of storage capacity here in a petrol variant. Uh, that's actually more than you'll get in a Focus or a Golf from the next class up. Which leaves us with what? Well, a very accomplished all-rounder, certainly, and a car that merits a significant place on any serious super mini buyer shortlist. In driving it, we were reminded of something a recently disgraced former Renault chief executive once said. There's nothing wrong with any car company that good cars won't fix. This is undoubtedly one of those. Good enough to reawaken British interest in the Clio? Possibly not, but you've watched this film. You know better. And if you're looking for a super mini, we think that you should give this one a chance. It might just surprise you.